Hello, everybody. Uh, how's it going? Good morning. Um, so, it's funny. Every time that I think that there's not going to be any news about uh, Tactics Ogre Reborn, there is news about Tactics Ogre Reborn. All right. So, um, this is going to be a, like, Google Translate type situation. So, fair enough. You know, a lot of this stuff comes out in Japanese first. So, uh, I haven't really fully read this article. I've heard a few little cliff notes here and there, but I'm just finding out about this. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and go through this thing. So, Tactics Ogre Reborn, a special interview with six developers, including Mr. Yasumi Matsuno, the creator of the uh, masterpiece tactical RPG. Dang right. Uh, we asked about this uh, game development history and appeal of this game that has evolved and revived. I'm curious if they're going to mention the lack of marketing practically ever for the series. Uh, Square Enix's uh, latest tactical RPG, Tactics Ogre Reborn, uh, scheduled to be released on uh, Nintendo Switch, PS5, PS4, and PC on November 11th, 2022. In this article, we, were deliver uh, we will deliver a special interview of the six development staff for this work. Uh, Mr. Yasumi Matsuno, the creator of Legendary Ogre Battle and the original version of Tactics Ogre. Um, Mr. Uh, Hitoshi Sakamoto, uh, who worked on the sound of, so of the same work. Um, was able to ask for an interview of, and it just kind of cuts off. Okay. So, from uh, Matsuno, uh, belongs to Algebra Factory. He's in charge of overall game design, script writing, and supervision for this work. Okay, so we finally got clarification on that. Uh, it's been, uh, he's been kind of teasing back and forth as to what his actual role was here. Um, so, uh, Mr. Kato here, uh, belongs to Square Enix. He's the producer. Uh, Katano belongs to Square Enix. He's in charge of the direction. So, he's the director. Um, uh, Yajima Tamahori. Tomohiro uh, belongs to Square Enix. He's in charge of the sound, uh, which I believe they said... Hang on. Somebody mentioned that uh, the sound guy is the same guy who did the sounds for uh, Vagrant Story, in which case, hell yes. Because, um, man, that game's uh, sound was freaking meaty. Anyway, um, and then Sakamoto belongs to Basic Scape. He's in charge of the sound direction. I think that was actually him. Um, Takahashi belongs to Square Enix. He's the lead game designer. Okay. So... Uh, please tell us why you named it Tactics Ogre Reborn, here and after known as Reborn. Tactics Ogre uh, Wheel of Fortune, uh, here after Wheel of Fortune, it, it is not just a remastered version, but a Reborn Tactics Ogre that remakes the battle design. By the way, the key visual uh, drawn by Mr. Akiko Yoshida for Reborn, uh, the current touch of the key visual for the Super Famicom version of Tactics Ogre, before deciding on Reborn, I was considering what kind of picture I would like uh, him to draw, uh, a rice field. Basically, what they're trying to say is that yeah, the uh, the old uh, uh, the old uh, picture that they used on the I believe it was the Japanese cover art for uh, uh, for uh, Tactics Over. That's what they uh, went with there. Why did you uh, design? <laughs> why did you decide to reborn Tactics Ogre in the first place? I love that translation. Uh, based on the opinions of everyone who played Wheel of Fortune when it was released, I had a strong desire to be involved in the development of Tactics Ogre again at some point. Uh, this is Kato talking, by the way. Uh, the turning point came when I was in charge of development for uh, FF12 Zodiac Age, uh, the original version of FF12. Uh, improving sound expression, including new audio recording, improved battle design, improved playability. Uh, now then, by making use of this know-how, it will be possible to create a new Tactics Ogre and uh, start a development. Which, by the way, I haven't, like, while I haven't personally played a lot of uh, FF12, I have watched and read a whole lot about uh, the difference between 12 and Zodiac Age. And generally speaking, it's seen as, like, by far the definitive version. Uh, so it's uh, quite a big uh, change they made to that one. Uh, like, they like, completely redid the skill system and everything to be just better and more appreciated overall. So, anyway, so you're inspired to develop it by ex uh, experiencing cutting-edge technology. Uh, Mr. Matsuno, what was the important thing to revive in Tactics Ogre? Uh, so, this is Matsuno now. Uh, I joined. Several production policies had already been decided. Uh, Mr. Kato and Mr. Kitano presented the major premise of we will not add new uh, VFX, maps, characters, scenarios, etc. while keeping Wheel of Fortune as the base. Okay, so... Um, so I guess we won't see uh, any new characters or Lenar joining, but, oh well. I guess technically, technically speaking, that wouldn't really be a new scenario. It just would be him not getting shanked as hard. Potentially, though, they might still redo the shotgun side quest. A anyway, moving on. So, this was mainly due to budget restrictions, but in reality, the number of stages, the number of events, magic skills, and the other data in Wheel of Fortune uh, were there two to three times larger than the original version. So in terms of volume, enough already. Yeah, you know what? Been saying this for a while. Uh, for everyone that wanted a total remake of absolutely every single little thing, this game is ginormous. Like, 100% run is several hundred hours long. Uh, anyway, 
Therefore, it was a story that, in principle, no new expansions will be made and it'll be just a brush up. However, the screen resolution is not comparable to the PSP and it has to support multiple hardware uh, types such as the Switch, PS5, and PS4, simultaneous support for multiple languages such as English and French, as well as support for mouse and keyboard operations. All right, had to go take care of something real quick there, but I uh, just want to say called it. As far as how we wound up with the kind of odd visuals, it's it's exactly because they were forced to do upscaling due to the fact that the PSP, like, uh, not very many things on the PSP uh, will have these specific issues, but the way that it was originally done, it like, the screen resolution, uh, the way that, uh, that it all looks, does not necessarily translate well to other screen sizes. Um, so, anyway, uh, moving on. So you're not just remaking the base work, uh, what was the first step in development uh, from Matsuno? Uh, first of all, we took players' opinions of Wheel of Fortune seriously and identified points that needed to be fixed, so I think we can f safely confirm that crafting will be fixed. After repeated discussions with the staff, we decided to proceed with the development by making a list of what we can do and what we can't do, what we should do and what we shouldn't. I entrusted the graphics to Mr. Kato, Mr. Katano, Mr. Minginawa, or Minagawa, there we go, uh, who is in charge of supervision, but only pointed out the parts that bothered me. On the system side, Wheel of Fortune's most unpopular level system has been reverted to individual units. In addition, give, uh, gave each unit a practice command. I revived the so-called unit training. However, it's not beneficial to spend too much time leveling individual units. We have introduced power leveling. The higher the level gap, the more experience a low-level unit can obtain to make it easier to level up. I love it! Okay, so... The main benefit of the original class system was the fact that you could essentially cheese and, well, power level certain units un if you understood the system. Most people did not understand the system. In this particular case, it seems like, yes, they have very heavily, it sounds like they very heavily tilted the scale towards uh, low level units just flying way up. They brought back training, um, and, uh, oh man, there's gonna be so many comments, because I literally just put up that video a few minutes ago. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the training system is back. Uh, okay, I love it. I love it. This is, uh, I, the, okay, I was worried that it would create that weird situation from the original, uh, wherein you were basically, if you lost certain units, you were stuck in a position where you kind of you more or less went to go and uh, recruit new units out of random maps. I don't know where people got the idea that you would have to go and start units from level one. That's dumb. Never do that. You just you just go use recruit on any rando in Tynemouth Hill, and then suddenly you're back to a team of lizards, and then you kind of rework your team from there. Um, but this way, yeah, I, I love that uh, that they did it this way. Um, so it should be a lot more a lot more customizable. We'll see how it works out, but I'm just excited that they were aware of what uh, what should and shouldn't be uh, fixed. Anyway, so the Power Rebellion Rebellion was also in Wheel of Fortune, right? Yeah, the system itself was also in Wheel of uh, Fortune, but it has been strengthened to make it easier to acquire experience points. The Power Rebellion? I'm assuming they mean the, uh, the system where you get uh, points at the end of fights. In addition, we've also introduced consumable items, uh, doping items. <laughs> Interesting translation. They'll give you experience points as rewards in battle, so it's easy to level up even newly hired units in the latter half of the game. Interesting! Alright, so, uh... So those those were, uh, essentially, uh... Interesting. So they're basically like the, uh, the Pokemon items, then. Alright. So, I see. Are there any other new systems? As a new system, we introduce the Union level. Simply put, it is the level of the entire army, and it's also a level cap system. Good. Uh, they cannot raise the level of units beyond that level. Uh, the Union level will gradually open as scenarios uh, progress, called it, but since the upper limit is uh, set, it's not possible to raise the level extremely and ch uh, challenge the battle. Again, weird translation, but thank Google Translate for that. You can't play like, I'm strong, therefore the operation... <laughs> That's right, therefore the operation of units as a tactic game becomes important. In that respect, I think it's more difficult than Wheel of Fortune. Glad to hear it. However, since the Union level is slightly higher than the enemy level, I think that if you raise the level to maximum, you can play a little bit easier than it normally would be assumed. Also, when returning to the scenario in the world function, you can ignore the level cap and change the battle if the stage has been cleared once. By acquiring and equipping strong weapons and armor, even if the battle is with a level cap, don't worry, the difficulty will be reduced by the amount of the strong armor. Basically, they're saying you can still new game plus stomp, all right? In that case, will people with a playstyle that seeks strength uh, enjoy it? What adjustments have you made to magic and skills? Uh, magic and skills were reduced because there were too many of them. Uh, this was also necessary for optimizing the thinking algorithm, uh, here and after known as the AI. 
Told you. By limiting the number of spells, skills, and consumables that can be set, the AI can no longer no longer needs to perform unnecessary simulations, making it work more smoothly. At the same time, it is important for players to choose what to set. I think it's closer to the way the original is played. Reborn is a game that has been improved with the concept of more comfortable as a modern game. And you know what? By the way, for anyone worried about this, this is 100% accurate across the board here. Because realistically, think about any situation where you were using your spellbook. Most of the time, you used less than four to begin with. And for another thing, if you ever played around with using the AI at all, if you ever gave them Field Alchemy 4, I hope you're ready waiting 30 seconds for them to take a turn as they go and they try to predict the use of every single item in that spell list on everybody around. So that I'm actually really glad about. All right, so the fun as a strategy game is getting deeper and deeper. Speaking of Tactics Ogre, the story is also popular. While you are supervising the script, are there any parts that you have improved further? Since this work is fully voiced, we carefully examined the scenario and made corrections. It is something like, I focused on the text to be heard rather than text to be read. However, that is my particular uh, particularity, and I think it's something the players will be concerned about. Okay, so they changed it a little bit to sound better when you speak. Fair enough. To emphasize the charm of full voice, in Wheel of Fortune, new characters and episodes were added, and characters were that were originally enemies became allies. Will be there be such elements this time? There are no additional events, but the dialogue is modified to express the characters' subtleties according to the voice actors' casting. Good, 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 good. See, that was one of those things I was really worried about for this one, because if they didn't, like, if they didn't get all the subtle stuff in there, it basically would become like triangle strategy, where it's just it it just feels off the entire time. Um, in this particular case, yeah, it sounds like that was one of their big focuses. So, Pirate Athel Athelstan, Athelstan, whatever, is a typical example, but I think you'll get a different impression from Wheel of Fortune in the first place compared to the original version. Wheel of Fortune doubles the dialogue alone. Therefore, the scenario is the same as Wheel of Fortune. In addition, the extra four episodes, Diva, Search for Warren, True Knight, and Twelve Heroes, is also reprinted. Interesting. That actually got uh, changed... Uh, quite a bit. Um, I think it was the songstress Search for Warren was the same because it's a uh, Star Trek reference. True Knight was the same, and it was Magnificent 12, not uh, the 12 heroes, but whatever. Anyway, um, you can play them uh, once you reach the ending. In addition, in this work, 12 heroes has the meaning of end content, and it is the highest difficulty, which it technically already was. Um, like, uh, Final Tardy, it has rank 7, for example, in a lot of his skills, but uh, yeah, that dude can, uh, can actually beat a solo run. It's... Uh, Kind of something. Which, by the way, actually, a quick thing to go uh, go on here where they were talking about the levels. I cannot wait to break this system. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, I just can't wait to see uh, what a solo looks like in this new system. So, hard work that needs to be done only to meet a wide range of needs. Whatever that means. Uh, the UI of Tactics Ogre has always been very nice, but when you decided to renew it in pursuit of convenience, what kind of consultation did you have with Mr. Minigawa, who worked on the original? This time, Mr. Minigawa was extremely busy developing other projects. I consulted with him about how to increase the resolution of the maps and characters, and while they decided on a policy, I was asked to supervise the graphics in general. However, the UI was mostly absorbed by the development team. As expected, each new specification required new detailed support, so we couldn't force Mr. Minigawa to be the, bear that much of a burden. Did you have any difficulties with renewing the UI? Uh, work was progressing based on the UI of Wheel of Fortune, but when it became necessary to support mouse operations, various problems arose. Then don't do mouse! Who plays this with a mouse? Um, a typical example is the installation of a close button that is unnecessary for controller operations. In the case of a mouse, windows can be closed by canceling the right click and close can be uh, closed by clicking the left. I have to. As you can see it, it took a lot of time to build the UI to be compatible with both operations. Also, after implementing it, when I actually operated it, there were many impressions of this part is different and I asked them to make corrections each time. It was a series of hardships. Okay. I love the fact that they actually asked them to be to make it more similar to the PSP version. Curious to see how it'll go, but I'm assuming everything is going to be in the right place. Anyway, so that's right. In particular, the battle command UI on the battle screen was changed at the very end, just before the end of development. At first, we used the text command system of Wheel of Fortune, which was fine on the PSP, which had a small LCD screen, but when we played it on a large TV monitor, the windows would get in the way. Therefore, the icon selection method used in the original version has been further improved and implemented. I put a lot of strain on the programmers, but in the end, I'm glad the, uh, that I made the change. The configuration settings, such as the key assignment functions, are also substantial, so I hope you can customize it to suit yourself and play. Good! Good! I can use my original controls on Switch. Glad to hear it. Alright, there are ten different uh, settings depending on the player. By, by the way, it's funny. I've been specifically going and playing through Felseal over and over on the Switch to get used to using the Switch controls. Gonna end up switching it back to PSP controls anyway. Alright, 
So, there are 10 different settings depending on the player. I really appreciate the ability to make fine adjustments. Please tell us what we have emphasized in the UI design. The resolution has increased. We had to change the layouts of various UIs. Basically, the designer comes up with a modified version of the design, but I think there were many times when we retake things that didn't fit the atmosphere. Especially on the designer side, there was a strong tendency to be bound by Mr. Minigawa's design in Wheel of Fortune, and it was necessary to free him from that. I instructed them to forget about Wheel of Fortune and instead stick to the original version. At times, we created sim uh, sample images in Photoshop and presented them to the designer, who then rebuilt the design based on the sample. I think that the retake at, uh, at the uh, end of development was very difficult, but I think the designers also took pride in making a better product. So, there's a lot of troubles with UI. Just speaking of Tactic Sogar, pixel art cutscenes are also a big attraction. Please tell us what you devised in order to increase the resolution of Reborn. So this is from uh, Katano now. Um, a policy for increasing the resolution, we ask the designers to keep in mind uh, to increase the resolution without losing the original expression of the pixel art. If you aim for too high resolution, you'll end up with a dull picture that loses the feel of the dots, or a picture that deviates from the original uh, impression. Um, so basically, they were aware of, uh, of all the stuff that we've already discussed on this. So, a new charm was born by full voice and orchestral performance. Okay, so they don't seem to elaborate further on the, uh, on the resolution changes there, but it seems like, for the most part, they nailed the maps, they nailed the cutscenes. Um, there's a little bit of extra smoothing in, uh, in everything else, but uh, look... The more I look at it, honestly, it's... I, like, I love the visuals overall. I know it's got the claymation thing in some cases, but every time I look at it, it's just... I don't know, it just looks pretty. I want to play it. Anyway, moving on. So, a new charm was born of full voice and orchestral performance, which, by the way, if you've heard any of the new OSTs, man, that's that stuff is pretty. I'm loving it. So... Uh, when creating the cutscenes with full voice, what points did you take into account when it came to the sound production? So, uh, this is from Matsuno again. Uh, the recording site, we tried to record while paying attention to whether the units were next to each other, close distance, or apart, far distance. Dude, they... Okay, I love that. <laughs> Please tell me that they scream at each other now. Oh, oh, oh man, I can't wait to hear what this sounds like. Um, especially, like, the, uh, the bit with the, uh, the soldier and the short bow, um, uh, at the fort. Uh, the, man, I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to do that scene uh, first. Just uh, you know, I'm I already know I'm going cha uh, not chaos, but neutral first. So, gonna get to see that one. All right. So, in the latter case, I feel like I'm going to have to raise my voice a little. Also, I always participated in the recording and gave instructions to the director and the voice actors regarding the interpretation of lines. Good. See, they had the original writer on it. Good. So the direction should be there. The director is a friend of mine from the old Square era, so I think the recording process went quite smoothly. However, the script alone is 310,000 characters. <laughs> I, honestly, I expected more. Um, I can't generalize because there are a lot of lines, but if you convert it to a 30-minute animation, it's equivalent to about two courses. Um, for Tamaki Mayuno, who played Denim, the main character, the recording was divided into five parts, each lasting about three to four hours. Since there are so many shouting lines, there were times when, the, when his voice became raspy at the end. <laughs> oh man, this is gold. Also, there were a lot of voice actors and a lot of people, so it took about three months just to record. I can... I can only thank the person in charge of, uh, what the hell, Toho Koshuyina for coordinating the schedule. Okay, that actually got way more care in it than I expected. So, 310,000 characters of dialogue, three months uh, recording time, it's a number that uh, uh, realizes the greatness of the volume. But as a player, I'm looking forward to advancing the story. Did you recreate the sound effects? Yes, we rebuilt it. The initial development policy was based on the premise of using Wheel of Fortune. However, we have implemented a scream that is a fully that is fully voiced when the unit is incapacitated. Good, good. I'm hoping to get those FFT screams again. Like, just gotta have that echo on there, you know? At that moment, the conventional sound effects began to bother me. As with the map textures, at first glance, it looks like the original version, but in reality, it's a much higher resolution. And I'm convinced with the sound effects that it needed to be worked on as well. It was in the final stages of, of development, but I asked Mr. Yajima, the sound director, to rework almost all the sounds. Okay, I... By the way, from what I hear, this is why people have a hard time working with this guy. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, this is Yajima now. At the end of development, when I finished most of the sound work, Mr. Matsuno called me in and suggested that we replace all the sound effects. However, when I asked him what he thought what, uh, he saw when the game uh, in general, he strongly emphasized the importance of sound effects, I felt like. Um, which, yeah, I, like I've said multiple times, you know, if you look, if you compare FFT and Tactics Over and all that thing, 
like in many ways, FFT just kind of dumbed down the, the Tactics Ogre thing, but dude, those sound effects, they hit different. And it sounds like it's, uh, it, it, again, same thing with Vagrant Story, like, you don't even need a lot of things when you got the just crisp sound effects there, so I'm, I'm curious how this is going to go. Alright, so was the replacement work difficult? This is uh, Mr. Yaji Malt. Was very difficult. Since the past specifications were reported as they were, it was late in development, and there were problems with memory capacity, and it was not possible to change the specifications of the past built in sound significantly, so there were many places where it was difficult to replace the sounds. This basically sounds like the issues they had with throwing a lot of features into the PSP version um, all over again. Okay, a little bit of an interruption there. Okay, so in the midst of this, we're making various improvements, such as improving the sound quality of the resin material uh, waveforms. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. Uh, replacing them with highly explicit sound effects according to the context of each skill and effect, and making the UI sounds easier to understand. Mr. Matsuno also checked it every day, and I think we were able to make a satisfactory response after a lot of retakes. It's been a long time since I worked with Mr. Matsuno, but it was, uh, I was really excited to be able to uh, work with him, uh, who was enthusiastic as before. Well, I'd imagine. He's only been talking about this for, what, over a decade? <laughs> so, I see. When you play the game, you should also pay attention uh, to the carefully selected sound effects. What criteria did you use to cast the voice actors for uh, the full voice? Uh, this is Mitsuno now. So, I don't watch anime very often, so I mainly interview the voice actors who dubbed foreign movies and foreign dramas. This is the uh, same as FF12, which, god, I actually like the voice acting in that. Um, of course, everyone is a veteran, so they are very active in animation and games, but my choice was from the aforementioned Western movies and overseas dramas. I was joking earlier that, honestly, if he was still around, somebody needed to, uh, uh, to get Alan Rickman to do, uh, Tartaros, but, anyway. So, I chose this voice, uh, because it matched the image of the, of the character, and, uh, researching the name and background, and then I made the request. So, tell us your impressions when you objectively look at the cutscenes with recorded voices. So, when I played through the whole story again, I felt the characters were literally, uh, breathing, uh, were literally breathed life into them. Okay, so that's just translation jank. After all, the addition of the voice actor's acting made it possible to grasp the character's emotions and, above all, increase the sense of realism. I was impressed that the script I wrote was raised to the next level. I would, uh, look, uh, to once again thank all the over 90 voice actors who participated. Which, um... Yeah, I'm really curious to see if uh, uh, if um, Gildas ends up sounding like Riker. Uh, we haven't heard him yet, but I really hope so. So, I want to see cutscenes with voices soon, following them from uh, FF12, uh, The Zodiac Age. There's This is another re-recording of the live performance. Whatever that means. Uh, uh, this is Kado now. Uh, because of the quality of the music, people were talking about how the cutscenes and battles were even more realistic with the implementation of the voices. Personally, the original Super Famicom version Sound Source is m one of my favorite songs, and I still listen to it often. Same here. And one of my long-held dreams, I want to listen to these wonderful songs in an orchestra, has finally come true. Uh, did I believe people would like uh, Sakamoto and Iwata's music? Uh, must have been from the same dream. Okay, so basically he's just saying it sounded like a dream. Which, awesome! So it sounds like they uh, they might have potentially cut down on some of the flourishes from the PSP version and maybe given it more uh, more drums like the original. Unclear, but I guess we'll see. So I heard that it was recorded with an orchestra. Uh, what was your impression when you uh, heard the sound of uh, Tactics Ogre once you reworked them for Reborn? It says, there are a lot of recklessness and mistakes, but I feel they're doing their best. <laughs> it's important that you do your best at all times. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, it said, uh, if I'm now with experience, I should be able to express the story's breadth following the essential side of the story again in music, so I'd like to write a few songs for cutscenes. This was a consultation, and I was asked to compose it. Also, I made a request for a song for a certain battle, and I finished a cool song. I prepared the other new songs, so I'd be happy if you could actually play them and listen to them. Wait, what? Okay, cool, they added some new music, and... I'm going to call it now. It's going to be either the Lenar fight or it's going to be the Zabos fight that got the new song. I can't wait to hear that. Anyway. Um, so, the importance of tactics increases with the evolution of AI. The enemy AI, depending on the battle situation, tactics, fields, conditions, and all that, it sounds very interesting. Okay, uh, bad translation. Um, the player has become a rewarding enemy that needs to be considered and fought based on the situation at that time. You have to rework your tactics in some difficult spots, but the AI will respond by changing its movements in detail. I'm curious how it'll do that, because before it was sort of like zones of influence, um, and in many cases it kind of resulted in neutral encounters in some part, uh, some fights seeming like their AI had died, which... 
like it hadn't they just weren't involved in the fight but it was never quite clearly like it, it in, in most cases it ended up getting kind of lost and i only have that in mind <laughs> because uh recently was doing the uh mount wobry fight for the third time uh for the uh, uh for the level one run because they keep losing that save file Anyway, back to it. So, it's not a so-called shogi-style battle, but a battle that changes dynamically. That's right, it's made up of various stacks and consists of several elements. First is positioning, and this work is now possible to think about the frontline position where the enemy will fight with the player. Uh, enemy positions will be considered based on topography and the movement of the player's army, such as a map with narrow roads and a wide map like a plane. Next, the AI considers that melee attacks and ranged attacks have damaging characteristics. Ranger attacks such as bows are effective against rearline classes, but not so much against frontline classes such as knights. AI decides movement by combining this damage difference and the above mentioned positioning. In addition, AI can take into account a lot of information such as what is on the map and the state of their skills. Now, by state of skills, I wonder if that means that they'll have cooldowns or if that means that they're j just considering what's available, more or less. So, good. Um, actually, the, uh, the SNES version had some of this, and uh, the PS1 version had more of it, I believe. Um, wherein sometimes they would specifically hold certain parts of the map, so hopefully we'll see a lot more of that. Um, the AI in the PSP remake did occasionally do smart stuff, but it felt like they hadn't quite finished polishing it up. So, like, they had the means to do certain things, um, but, like, in the Japanese version, they went way too heavy with buffs and things, um, and then they sort of got uh, tweaked down for the US version. Which, before you wonder if the AI got dumber, no, that just means that they're faster and more efficient. Um, but they never did really do that whole line-holding thing, except for a couple areas. So, AI has made considerable progress. I'm looking forward to practicing my tactics. The battle tempo has also improved in this work. Double speed mode has been implemented, and animations from the unit movement uh, speed to magic to uh, VFX will be faster. I personally think isn't this the standard. Um, also, it's largely due to changes in battle commands during battle. In Wheel of Fortune, it's necessary to select each subcommand as weapon attack, magic skill, etc., and dig deeper into the hierarchy. This time, the attacks that can be used by changing the UI will be displayed all at once. Ah, okay, cool. So, XCOM 2 style there, good. Uh, the operation steps have been reduced, not uh, just by not having to dig deep. Especially in the past, I didn't know that I couldn't use magic due to lack of MP without digging deeper, but this time it's all displayed, so I can instantly grasp which commands can be used and which ones uh, can't. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, so again, very reminiscent of what XCOM 2 did with, uh, with their stuff, wherein if you can do certain things, they will just appear on your skill bar. Anyway. So, the tempo, operability, visibility, and other elements have also been powered up. Uh, we are also working to speed up the AI. Uh, the AI has been remade from scratch, but we've removed spells and skills and make it difficult to make decisions. Uh, we've also limited the number of spells and skills that can be set on a single unit. As a result, it's now possible to execute complex thoughts at high speed that are incomparable to Wheel of Fortune. Good, 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 good. Of course, this is largely due to hardware performance and memory availability, but AI is evolving through a series of such refinements. These uh, works have improved the tempo of the entire battle. By the way, when it comes to raising the level of my units through exercises, that's practice mode, I mostly left it to the AI. In the meantime, I make coffee and do other work. I think the AI in this game is reliable enough to annihilate enemies without any problem. Okay, so probably should complete that AI-only run of uh, TOPSP before this then. <laughs> So, lastly, give a message to your fans. So, from Sakamoto here, I have one regret about the Super Famicom version of Tactics Ogre. I believe that the story is based on love for people and in this work. I've added a new song to change the impression a little, and I think the impression will change once again with the voice and having a different flavor, so I'll be happy if you could pick it up. Okay, I mean, I already pre-ordered the thing. Uh, next is Takahashi. Uh, for the battle area, we detailed, we made detailed adjustments and added or deleted elements over and over. It's a tile with a lot of volume, so there's a lot of difficulties. But in the end, I think we were able to create a game that you can, that you feel worth doing, especially when it comes to selecting skills and organizing your army, which, such as which classes to include. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. I can't wait to try and do a solo run anyway. Uh, next is uh, Katanol or Katanoi or whichever that is. Um, 
Myself been imp in, uh, involved as a developer for Tactics Ogre since the PSP version, but now Mr. Matsuno and the development staff are carefully considering how to entertain the people who will play it. I went forward, the cutscenes were fully uh, voice recorded with Mr. Matsuno present, and I saw the cutscenes for the first time with the sound on during the development of Reborn. I honestly thought that the sense of presence was amazing due to the directing and acting skills of the voice actors. As for the battle, we carefully improved it, and the battle proceeded at a good tempo with UI improvements and carefully adjusted behavior in high speed mode. Okay, so they did adjust uh, how they act in high speed. Interesting. Um, I think I was able to express the fun of playing by considering not only the battle board, but also the formation and, uh, formations and equipments uh, such as skills. All the development staff uh, think that you will enjoy the new tactics, Ogre, so please take it in your hand and enjoy it to the end. Alrighty then, translation. Um, this is from Yajima here. I'm truly honored to be involved in the Masterpiece Tactics Ogre this time. Uh, he has a very high level of passion for the development and staff. I'm assuming they're talking about Matsuno there. And I'm grateful that he responded to the various requests and adjustments in detail. We added voices, brushed up sound effects, and add adjusted the balance of the volume while taking uh, care not to spoil the view of the world uh, from the player's point of view. We hope that you'll enjoy the new Reborn Tactics Ogre, which is a collection of thoughts of all the development staff so far. This is a cattle... Ketolvi? I don't know why that's... I, I'm assuming the translation janked out on his name there. I've uh, been involved in the development of titles that are said to be masterpieces three times, and I've been able to refine the content to a higher level, uh, thanks to the enthusiastic support of the fans and the development of the Super Famicom and PSP versions. I truly feel that this is the result of all the efforts of those involved in development. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, and those who have played Tactics Ogre in the past, it will be beyond memories experience. And for those playing Tactics Ogre for the first time, it will be an unprecedented experience. I hope you will enjoy the world of deep stories to the fullest. Personally, I am looking forward to seeing the reaction from all the people that, like, were gushing over Triangle Strategy and want to see how it's really done. I cannot wait till November. Anyway, lastly from Mitsuno here, uh, once the, uh, at once when developing Tactics Ogre from Legendary Ogre Battle, um, I'm assuming they're talking about March of the Black Queen, we changed it completely without following the same game system. Why? At the time, we were a small and weak manufacturer struggling to establish our brand by showing that we could make anything. As a result, I think there were many fans who left. The same will be true for this work. However, the title of the Ogre series is based on the concept of never fearing change and boldly taking on challenges. I wouldn't call it a perfect remake. There will be drawbacks. It will be uh, nice to have a full remake, including the graphics, but in that case, I would have chosen to make a new one. In that sense, I was involved in this work to make a... Uh, to mark a break, to move on. We would like to thank our fans for their enthusiasm and support over the years. I would not have been able to Reborn without everyone's voices, and I hope you'll pick up the uh, Reborn Tactics Ogre and play to the end. Okay, so it sounds like if this does... Basically what I'm understanding, the subcontext of what was just said there, if this does well and it gets a budget, then we're finally getting Ogre Battle 8. I mean, that basically sounds like what's implied there. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, gushing over all this here. Man, I... I'm excited to hear about these changes, though. Uh, this difficulty sounds like uh, basically what I've artificially been creating in Tactics Ogre PSP with cheats for a long time, so... I cannot wait to start challenging this thing, um, so hope y'all are excited as I am. This friggin' calendar is moving way too slow for my liking. I mean... How is it still three months? It's like, come on, days, go faster. I mean, it would be nice if the bills stayed where they were, but the days just went faster. You get what, I, you get what I'm saying. Anyway. Um, so, until the next bit of news, here we are. See you in the next one.